Firstly, all of them is very close to its classical location, given by the quantile of semicircular, and with a very explicit error bound. Okay? And this is uh, almost as, as good as you can. Uh, you, can, you cannot do anything better than that. And, and, and there is this explicit error bound. And we can use this, utilize this uh, error bound when you compute uh, uh, this, this integral. OK, so this is the, the only page uh, in this uh, um, uh, proof remaining, uh, the only, only page that I have here. So what Kosolich and Thaulis and then Jones did was that they did uh, sort of formal computation of the leading term of this integral and then got this uh, limit of fn due to the leading order. Of course, they, at that time, the, the rigidity is not proven and, and, and so on, so it's not rigorous, but uh, the math, the, the result should be true. Uh, what we did was that we made their analysis uh, rigorous, first of all, and also computed the next order term, giving the, the fluctuations. So remember that the, the function that we have to analyze is g, is given by this form here. Beta is there, and the lambda k is there, and n is going to be large. So we have to do the critical points. So if the critical points, you take a derivative to x to z, then we get this equation. And this is the, uh, uh, the stress transform, right? The stress transform equal to some number, right? That's what we have to solve. So now you try to plot this graph maybe and then think about it. And there is a, two different things happening right, depending on your beta. When beta is small enough, then you can show that this integral you can approximate by, by, by semicircle law, that is okay to do, and then by solving that equation, your z critical is around this point, which is, so when we do this integral, the important thing was that our count of the integral should be to the right of all of the eigenvalues. So in the limit, those eigenvalues will be in the support of semicircle law from minus two, two and two, and this critical point is away from that uh, semicircle uh, interval, okay, and therefore, things should, will go through. On the other hand, when beta is bigger than half, then approximating this by uh, semicircle law doesn't work. I mean, that's not a good approximation. Instead, what one can show is that uh, this is something that you have to do a, a computation. Uh, z is going to be very, very close to the, all of these eigenvalues. In particular, it will be very close to the largest eigenvalue. And one can get uh, some estimation between z, c is going to be always bigger than lambda 1, but the difference is, uh, we can control that difference. The difference is smaller than the difference between lambda 1 and lambda 2. So the, the, that's really, really sticking to, to lambda 1. Okay? So to your question, uh, when in the critical temperature case, I believe that, the, that, crit, that uh, Zc, the difference from Zc to lambda 1 will be of the same or similar order as the distance between lambda and lambda 2. And that will make computation complicated, right? And then here's uh, some lemma. Then once you have that, then here's some lemma for all beta other than half. This fn, which is log of this integral, you can really use uh, uh, be decent, and it can be approximated by g value that just the critical point. And once you have that, then uh, g is here. Now then, you don't replace g by its, its expected mean, but rather keep that and then apply, plug, start plugging the zc, either this form or that form in here, and start looking at the fluctuations. If I plug this one here, then it's a sum of log of uh, linear statistics. On the end, if you plug lambda 1 here, when there are fluctuations from lambda 1, and also fluctuations from the linear statistics, and you have to compare them, and it turned out that the lambda 1 fluctuations is the dominating one. And, and, and that's how, how the proof goes. Okay. So, okay. All right. Any questions or comments? What can you say about CN? There? CN is uh, some, um, so CN is just coming from the CN. So, which is, um, uh, it's, uh, a, it's a constant. It doesn't depend on the, uh, the, the eigenvalues. So, it's just an explicit constant. Uh, for this one here? 
Uh, so what we are doing here is that so so we so uh, we we suppose we are given lambda case, right? You, you, Right, that's right. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So, yes. Yeah, so, so even though from this three test transformation uh, give us something about lambda one, when we are computing this f n, we don't need this one. We we only have to compute g, right? So I'm going to plug this lambda one in here, and then even though I plug in lambda one here, here's lambda k for this c of eigenvalues of lambda k it is okay to replace it by semicircle, semicircle law. So this one will be, be replaced by two beta lambda one and the integral of log of lambda one minus x, the uh, semicircle law. And, then, and then, then I expand it again in terms of, of lambda one. And that, that's how we get the, so in, in short, this g in principle can be complicated if you plug lambda one in here, but only the linear, fun, it's only the, uh, the first order approximation in Taylor series, which means that just lambda one, just not lambda one squared or any other, just lambda one is the leading contribution. That one has to uh, do some analysis to, to make sure that that's, that's, that happens. Okay, right. Um, okay, so I'm going to change the subject a tiny bit, uh, but within the uh, uh, here. Right, so, so so far I talked about SSK. But then in the SSK, there is a SSK plus external field is also interesting uh, subject. So, so this is SS two spin SSK. But then you may think about adding external field. Here's H times summation of, of, of sigma i's. Okay, what it does is that uh, if you want to make H is large, if you all the sigma i's are in the aligned in the same direction, uh, then this number will be big. Right? If if h is if you assume h is positive number, so this h may interfere with this j, and it's, in this it does. And the, the proof, uh, the result of uh, 2015 by uh, uh, Weiko Chen and Day and Panchenko. Oh, sorry, there's a n there. Sorry, not Panchenko. Panchenko. Okay, Panchenko is not here. Okay, <laughs> well, Panchenko's friends maybe. <laughs> <laughs> So even so, they they consider even p-spin model. They consider more general, but uh, if you have a general p-spin, including two-spin, and for all temperature, they found the just central classical central limit scaling, as long as this h is present. If h is part any positive number just there, then it, it changes the, the thing completely, right? So this is this dramatic change. So we have to compare that with h equals zero case, right? Uh, so in the low temperature. Uh, for p equals two n and, and, and anything, here's n, that's not n half. And in high temperature, we say n to the two thirds or n, but here this is just entry limit theorem, okay? So we can try to do this one uh, in our framework and trying to do this integral trick and so on, but then it will generate the eigenvector component and one has to do something about it. Okay, so I haven't done that. Uh, okay, uh, it's something to do in the future. Uh, but instead, I, we thought about the uh, easier problem. Okay, so it's also very similar, uh, similar flavor, but analysis is very, very quick. So let me just state that. So it's spinless plus, instead of external field, something called the uh, ferroharmonic, ferromagnetic Hamiltonian. Instead of summation of sigma i, summation of sigma i, we take sigma, summation of sigma i square, right? Okay, so that's the change. Okay, instead of summation of sigma i, Square, okay. If that uh, square, square, if you square it, sum of i j sigma i sigma j, well then this this part and that part look similar. You can combine them together. So j of i j plus m is you know your new matrix. Okay. So this is Hamiltonian is uh, again quadratic, but now quadratic part is coming from this random matrix plus every entry is shifted by m. So it's non-zero mean uh, random matrix. Okay. So it's a non-zero mean, non-zero mean Wigner random matrix, in also known as rank one uh, spiked random matrix, and we chose well studied. So, okay. So spiked random matrix. I just uh, uh, 
uh, remind you what that does. If you haven't seen it, then this will be the, it's not a reminder, but uh, okay. Anyhow, so what is known there is that, uh, so we are going to scale m to make it interesting, m hat over n. Here n is, is there so that this uh, vectors has no one, right? That's the natural scaling that one has to adjust. What is known is that uh, if this mean, uh, scaled mean m hat, is not too large, so in other words, there's a random um, wigner matrix, mean is tiny bit big, but not too much, then you don't feel it. And if the mean is large, then there's a huge large, eigen, uh, large eigenvalue, right? As you can expect that from the, the, the overall translation. So the transition is all well known. Here's m hat is less than one, m hat is bigger than one. Two different things happen. So if it's not too big, then everything just looks like a mean zero case. Then the large eigenvalue will behave like a, a here and just same as the uh, usual trace with scale. On the other hand, if there is a largest mean pulls out one large second bill outside of the support, like in here, and that one is so free to move, the way it fluctuates is going to be the classical central limit theorem type uh, scaling one over n to the half. Okay. So the result of three is that in that setup of, of uh, uh, um, Spin, two, two spin SSK plus ferromagnetic case. Um, so complete on the same analysis just follow through, except that uh, you are looking at not mean zero Wigner, but uh, sorry, the regular Wigner. We have a not mean, not mean zero Wigner, and that's the only change. And then uh, taking into account that is sometimes these two things can happen, you got the following uh, phase diagram. So here's M hat the strength of the ferromagnetic uh, part, and this inverse temperature is killed by two. Then when m hat was zero, that's the first part that I talked about, you had either spin glass part and paramagnetic part, which are trace rhythm versus Gaussian n to the minus two third fluctuation versus n to the minus one fluctuation, the linear set is fluctuation, and this one is lambda one fluctuation. On the other hand, when m hat is large enough, given in this region, and this is the part that the, 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 the mean of the random matrix starting to dominate, and the one outlier of outlying eigenvalue will start to dominate. And there's lambda one away from the edge, and then you still have Gaussian, but this region for this Gaussian is completely different from this Gaussian, and the scaling is also different because it's a central limit, uh, 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 limit theorem type, type scaling. Okay, so this is the uh, result, and then the analysis is similar, except that that change. Right, so here's the final slide, so open question there. So then uh, you can, all, of course, think about the transitions in between, in particular when bad equals critical temperature is very interesting. Uh, just using, already using, no, using the knowledge of the random matrix that's already existing, <laughs> one can get the following result easily. So the Transition between this part and this part, so in, along this line here, so spin class to a ferromagnetic region, then m, the m hat is, should be scaled as uh, n to the minus 2 third. Upon that scaling, uh, the spiked random matrix theory, the rank one perturbation theory of the random matrix theory uh, applies, and that was very studied before. Um, okay, for example, a complex case here, the real case was studied by uh, Bloy, Mendel, and Virak, and uh, Mo, and, and Dong Wang here. Okay. And then uh, that, that transition, uh, so there is a well-defined uh, transitional uh, limiting distributions uh, that will be appearing here. And the fluctuation will be following uh, spinless fluctuations. And, but the other parts, uh, this part here, that part here, and also triple scaling region, okay, that's an open question. Okay. Um, between spin and the paramagnetic part, um, by looking at the variance of the fluctuations in here and in here, by matching them, explaining and matching them, it seems like when beta is approaching to half plus root log n times n to the one third seems to be the right scaling, um, but uh, we don't have any uh, concrete mathematical result in that direction. Okay, All right. So thank you for your attention. So, are there any questions?
Um, okay, um, I'm not an expert in that direction, so I cannot tell. Uh, but um, there are some predictions. So there are some numerical analysis, but the numerical analysis is very difficult once you have a finite temperature. Um, so there are, I, I believe there are at least two contradicting predictions. And someone at some point claimed that the critical temperature should follow trace rhythm uh, based on the fact that one cannot think of anything else. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I don't think there is any concrete uh, suggestions about that. Maybe physicists know more than me. But and to the fourth third. Oh, yeah, that's right, yes. Yeah, that's right, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I forgot to mention that here, Jan um, uh, Fyodorov and um, uh, Ladusa uh, computed this external field model. Uh, here, okay, I, I mentioned that uh, uh, Chen De, uh, De Panchenko computed this one for any H positive, and, but uh, uh, Jan Fedorov and uh, Ladusel, they computed with H scaling with N, and they, they, they found r r interesting scaling of H uh, respect to N, and then they also studied the transition uh, from, um, uh, from H zero version to, to H positive version. Yeah, there is also a traditional thing that, that they, they also computed. And also, uh, Ofo Zaituni, and also, I forgot the other person. Dembo. Uh, Dembo, Dembo and Zaituni also picked up their results, and then uh, some part of that uh, they made rigorous. Okay, so there are all those, those directions. Only like deviations, right? Oh, yeah, it, I'm sorry. <laughs> Keep forgetting, yeah. yeah. They did a large division theory about that, yeah. Are there any other questions or remarks? Thank you. And the next speaker is uh, Dumitriu, who will speak uh, again about.